Also, I need to point out, we gotta we gotta keep our eye on Sonic, man. He was popping he had off. A sick opening he game, had a he? sick opening game on that Vertigo. And you know, he's the biggest question. He's gonna be defending this B bomb site with JT, and that's been a huge question mark. But with Sonic being so confident right now, it's certainly gonna make things a lot easier for Cloud9. And right off the bat, Sonic finding an opening. And JT to follow up as well. So things are already off to a hot start for Cloud9. Yeah, with two nades, two sets of nades left. JT, OC, they're leaning towards the B bomb site here. That nade did a good amount for Floppy. I don't think it's going to be good enough for Kusa here. He's gonna, definitely going to need one or two and try and stay alive for his teammates. Just the whole thing of him staying alive. I don't actually think it's good enough. Exactly that. Exactly. Yeah, I love this approach from Cloud9. You have to take spools control if you have five players alive. Don't just get stuck on the bomb site. This is great play from Cloud9. Not really allowing any room for Gen G, and it's a very dominant piss around at that. Five members alive. Yeah, man. And if you're a Gen G there, I mean, you're just. At no point was there ever a fair 1v1. It was just always either two or three Cloud9 members either jumping across their screen, bait and switching, just making it just so difficult for Genji to find any sort of kill, let alone damage. So, once again, clean, clean entrance into that B bomb site for Cloud9. And here, full buy for Genji. It's. Five smokes though, normally what we see with five smokes is they want to keep that B bomb site just blocked off. Keep that smoked off the whole game and kind of stack towards the A, kind of force the teeth towards the A. Now it's really important for Cloud9 here when you start realizing that Gen G is going to keep smoking off the banana. You have a decision to make here. Don't let it go, don't let the time run down to a point at which that you're calling, wait for the smoke, wait for the smoke. Obviously we know firsthand here that's not going to happen. But when you make the call of like, hey, let's go banana, even if they keep re-smoking, it's just so important for you guys to just go through the smoke and just help trading. Instead here, we do see Cloud9 leading towards that A bomb side instead. There's still four smokes left on that Gen G side. Time taken down a little bit. So I'm hoping that Cloud9 will at least start making their way up to something here. Or at least that once they do decide to go somewhere, that it's a flat out explosion. You know, like we, we pop on the site, right? It's not going to be like one flash, one gets killed, and we're like a little bit passive. No, no, we're talking like if we go Full here, we fucking in. go. You know what I mean? <laughs> and here we go. Yeah, smokes are raining in now, even from Gen G side. Just a nice little thing from MOTM. This is exactly what I asked for, especially with the MAC-10s. It's so important that they're willing to take these like little duels, even if it's risky through the smokes, this is how you win these rounds. And you see as soon as that happens, Gen G, you're not allowing Gen G to rotate at all. So they're obviously forced to save with the weapons that they have. It's a little bonus round for them next round and whatnot. But such a dominant second round from Cloud9, keeping four members alive there. Good soldier MOTM getting in first. And you even saw he looked straight down to dodge the flashbangs and the pathing, it I mean, it was phenomenal. And Genji, they scrape by with a deagle and some utility. That'll be nice for them going into the next round, but the rest of the Genji, they're just going to be stuck on these USPs. So I think in the next round, we might see Genji kind of stacking together some sort of a, a set plan from the get-go to... Well, this is why I even I even say like the fin air rounds, but it, the whole thing of like a round like this when you know it's like a full save, and I still see teams that's just like spreading out like a default. Like, mm -hmm. come on, man, what do you think is gonna happen? You have like, <laughs> USP, no armor. Like, you're not getting, you're not winning that round. Like, at least be able to trade, like save a weapon, like get a few kills. Something, anything. Yeah, but something at least together, right? And especially here, you have some nades here, you know, that you can use as well if you're CT side. I do like this now. We have four towards A bomb side. This is actually not bad. It's Might a not very matter. fast oh. round. Well, you say that. This should be a trade. Yeah, okay. thank you so much. If they were spread out, this would have not have happened. He would have probably gotten the kill there as well. But this causes a lot of confusion now on that T side. They're forced to just literally just rush here. And we see here already from Gen G making that rotation over. This is all about timing. Are we going to see them running <laughs> right off the bat? <laughs> Nate Nesta. Oh, oh! He makes up for it. Yeah, you start laughing. I know. Kusta shows you're wrong. <laughs> I know. thought he was your mate there. He is, but yeah, that doesn't mean I can't laugh at him. Yeah, no, absolutely. Oh, this is somehow working so well. Huh. 
that's all about rotations. I actually think it's very sloppy from Cloud9. MOTM just jumping out there or whoever it was. That's fine. But the thing is, you kind of get too scared of like, oh, there's two there. Let's just go banana. But the problem is that you you have, you're all the way up in A when this is happening. So your rotations, you see, like, they're obviously CT servers there as well. Nice rotations from Gen G. Nice entry there as well. Was that a CT ball though? Who had the no, Molotov? No, the, the T's. That was the T's. So Molly. they just missed their own Molly? Yeah. yeah. Okay. They put him on the second one just. He was first. Yeah. Well, I mean, there was one on the stairs as well, though, that prevents anyone from trading that first kill. That could have been a mistake, yeah. So I was wondering if that was a mistake or if, if Genji, or I mean, yeah, Genji had managed to save the Molotov in the previous round. No. That All right. was definitely a, a flute. Or a definitely flub, someone's done a something wrong. Molotov. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right. Floppy towards the end of Halls. Cloud9 grouping up towards this bomb site. Big Hall's attack coming, and it's going to be Bentet in the pit. That smoke is pretty well timed, but I think, I mean, I think they're going to go through it. Here we go. Let's check it out. Three Bentet's defenders ready. at this bomb site. Blind in the pit, and at Sonic just trying to attract the tension. Bentet oh. has a stellar round. Floppy, the last one left, one versus four, almost was able to find that onto the AWP. That's a tight angle that he's got to peek into. Now, damage would be so beneficial, even if he just has to wait for the smoke to fade. He's got 50 seconds to chill in this pit, although someone is flanking from Halls. That's going to be Som. And now Floppy. This is all about damage. Yeah. And this is all about Gen G not allowing Floppy to do damage. Ooh, automatic. I can't believe be that. Careful. I can't believe that Halls player hasn't peaked yet. I can't believe they haven't just swung and taken him down. Oh, he's got the Mac-10, though. Yeah, it's perfect. Would you take that duel, Jason? Flying Mac-10, yeah, hell yeah. Mac-10 into Big Pit. Oh, better than Better than just sitting here playing patty cake and getting flanked out. He's going to get this kill. Oh, yes, yeah. he's got it. And he's found the escape route. So they're going to save the AK. Uh, money is not pretty. That's going to be the only weapon they'll have. But it's, I mean, he's got 1,100 in the bank, so it's not the biggest deal that he's actually saved this. And now do you want to invest in anything around it? And what a round from Bentet, but that first member of Cloud9, I believe it was MOTM that made it into Big Pit. I think it was Sonic, the he, one just spamming. He was just his, so yeah, blind. He was, he was just so blind. I don't even know if Bentet was going to peek that wide, but because he was so blind and just spamming, Bentet's just like, okay. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give it to me. I'm surprised they went through that smoke, which I'm cool with, but there was only one player actually trying to clear Pit. I don't know if like someone got stuck behind the smoke. Like Maybe. It was, yeah, yeah, it's very possible. <laughs> <laughs> it did look a little bit silly. <laughs> Unfortunate. Two to two, we're all tied up, and uh, Gen G, they stabilized their economy pretty pretty early on. 2,200 on Kusta and Automatic behind the investment. Bentet with 1,800, that's not too shabby. And I think there's a smart call, call from Cloud9 here as well. They actually don't buy from the AK as well. They just leave Floppy with the AK. Obviously, Armor have a Molotov as well, but not a single buy outside of that. They're pretty even in terms of money in that sense, but we should be seeing here someone baiting for Floppy, and for Floppy to try and get some kills here, keeping... The, the most important thing in this round is obviously trying to keep the sea economy at the low, as low as you can possibly do. Kusta with a nice trade there. That'd Gets the cool. first kill, yeah. If I Floppy mean, was almost able to actually transition that over, that would have been a fun little fight to see. Either way, they have a kind of access. Actually, there's only one defender here. And MOTM knows exactly where he is. He's got him frozen in banana. He's going to go down soon. It's fine if he dies here. That's actually perfect for MOTM. Although they're going to try and... Oh, they want to eliminate before they get the plant. The Glock, the smoke is up. There's the kill. Now they got to hustle back to the B-bomb site. JT is... Ooh, that's a really rough smoke, but it's going to work. Oh, wow. I love the reactions from both of these squads. Saw him. He knew he had to push out that banana. He was about to get crunched. And this boost, man... There's As a Molotov a CT, on Kusta. Yeah, but you know, OC's got such a deep aim. If he gets this clean kill on the bent head, which, oh, he does not do. But he, JT does pick up that A4 behind him, and he gets oh, that no. clean kill. Oh, this is completely doable. <gasps> the he dink. Dinks him. That would have been wild. If yeah. he had gotten that frag, I think he wins the round. That's oh, a my. very narrow victory for Gen G. Cloud9 almost pull a rabbit yeah. out of the hat. Yeah. I, I enjoyed that. I even really like the fact that JT and Sonic, they push out B 
forego the bomb plant for now. Yeah. Make sure they get that trade onto Som, then go into the B bomb site. That was bold. Yeah. And, and that I was mean, a full save outside of Floppy's AK. Yeah. And they that's... managed to get the three kills and the and bomb the down. I mean, you're super happy with this if you call out nine. And the, the bummer about that push down banana is that, I mean, obviously, Genji, a nice rotation down mid, but if they'd actually gotten that kill and been able to pick up the M4 on JT as well, that could have been that could have been pretty nasty. First, I was going to say first or second weapon round, but we look at the economy and obviously for Gen.G, you still have some more money on the board. Potential of one more buy here if Cloud9 were to get away with this, but this is full weapon round for both of these teams. Full sets of utility. And we're looking at the initial approach here. Gen.G not fighting for Banana. Holding their nades. I love that. Wait to see what the T sites are doing first. Wait to see what kind of nades they're using. There's the, always the option of potentially retaking Banana mid-round, for example, asking, for example, the call we see here on the minimap that Daps is making his way over to B. And if t in terms of timing here, one thing that wants to happen here, if Daps is going to be over here at the B bomb site, there's two ways of this happening. Just having the straight call of like, or straight read up, they're going to come B. The second one is you can't stay like this for too long. You have to actually make a move on. But at least the timing wise now, it's actually working out for Gen G. We do see the execute come in from Cloud9. Now, a lot of nades rain in, but a lot of nades left on Gen G as well. But Whoa. oh my God, this it doesn't even matter what. What an entry on the bomb side! JT just gets two kills right off the bat, and like, it's over. And round's over. Done and dusted. They had three members there from Gen.G. Full sets of nades. Doesn't really matter. They, I feel like they didn't use anything. What happened? They used it. They just didn't ever get in any kind of a real fight. I think they just kind of pounced. I, I think they just kind of tried to fight at the wrong position in the bomb site. Yeah, but all nades went back that back B, right? Like, there was none in pool. There was nothing for, for Cloud9 to just run through there. Like, there was nothing really that there was, was keeping them away. There was a Molotov sent to water, but I think the big issue was I think it was Som came through the smoke at Coffins. Yeah. He got picked off, and that was that kind of aggression didn't let any of the... Listen, no matter which way you want to spin it, three players at the B site getting no kills just can't happen. No, exactly. No, I, I completely agree. And one of the approaches you see, you mentioned the Psalms running through the yeah. smoke and screws there. Like, which is also fine. It's just it's not coordinated exactly. with anything else. Exactly. Which is also fine. And one of the things you mentioned here as well, when you look at the smokes, actually, there are some smokes raining in here, but you're Gen G here and you have some more nades. You want to block off the bomb side for Cloud9 here as well. And yeah, I mean, you see there very clear. There was a flashbang that came. That was it. That was the one flight. No one's flashed. No one's completely flashed. And to your point, even if that's unacceptable if you're Genji, like I think no the, one. The died. problem is the miss time is Som is supposed to bait when he comes to that smoke, right? He's not supposed to be the initial contact. He's supposed to get the two. Yeah. Regardless, I mean, I mean, you have to also say the utility from Cloud9 kind of probably mixed that timing up. That smoke at the front of the bomb site didn't let Koos to get any kind of action. Didn't let him know where anyone was going to head, be heading at that time. So. It was uh, not too shabby of a hit for Cloud9. Indeed, it wasn't. And we're looking that we're going to be seeing the same, but just going to be an contact play into Banana here. I actually quite like that. You kind of know that they don't have a lot of nades. Now, granted, you end up going down just as I say that Caster Curse is real, etc. And they actually fall back from that. This is what I don't kind of like. At least take the pool control there with the help of your oh. teammates. You set yourself up a little bit more for trades. I'm not sure if it's actually going to matter all too much, even if Cloud9 do get this bomb site now. Four on three situation with an op on automatic that's going to be saved. Yeah, he better start backing off now. They need that weapon. So four to three for Cloud9 on the T side. Gap in that. So automatic's going to flirt with it a little bit. And now backs away. The winner of this plays 100 Thieves, and the loser plays Chaos in the lower bracket. Yes, Just indeed. so we have an idea of, uh, of what, what, what's at stake here. No one's getting eliminated today. Those, that fun comes later. And I love this change of pace from Cloud9 as well. I mean, it's not like we saw it last round as well when we mentioned it. I think that they have found their opening there. Gen G had three members on that B bomb side on the mat on the weapon round that we saw, and they didn't get a single kill. Cloud Cloud9 next last round, just a contact playing to B. Same thing. They do get the trade, 
but I think that they have definitely found their holes. And this is what I was talking about versus that EG Furia map as well. Of when you can't hold defensively like the way that Genji is doing, yeah, obviously you have to talk about uh, some other things. Maybe it's a banana play aggressively here, and that's exactly what we see Genji do. Let's fight for banana early here a little bit more. Let's have Cloud9 waste some more nades if they want to take the banana control, or at least showcase that hey, we actually Ooh. have banana this time. Now you can fall back and kind of have. Now you're in a good spot as well. Let Cloud9 do the next move here. Or if you hear a bunch of stuff in mid, now this is where you set up for mid round aggression for mid. You flash bang out and you f you fight here. Ooh, automatic. He's gonna go down. Even if he hits that shot, no if it's not a two for one, he's he's dead no matter what. And Cloud9, they're clearing big big trades to get into the bomb site. And again, it's so fast and convincing. The flank is already here. The fact that bomb is down in pit is kind of an issue at the moment, but it also forces Cloud9 to slow down and address this issue. And Sam just got spotted out. This buys some time for Kusa, potentially an opportunity, especially if he gets his oh, timing no. right. But oh, that. That That's doesn't it. help things at all. That seals it. Yeah. No more nades. They're just gonna have to make this work without utility, without a flashbang. Saw might want to try and save the AWP, but Kusa got a kill, which brought him a little bit back. So, uncoordinated on calling for the retreat, but yeah. Saw is going to back out in the one versus two. And this timing in this round for automatic towards that lane side, man, that was so off for him. Maybe I thought he was trying to dodge a flash, but then he, he just stuck around a little bit yeah. too long. No, I think very... he needed to take on that, that deeper angle first you either... and then fall back right. and make one decision or the other. Yeah, I think I was thinking the same thing. I was I was like, he's sticking around, he's hesitating. He either needs yeah. to get aggressive or just call it off. And that's exactly what I was gonna say there. Like we see, and it, it, we saw the same thing on Ver Vertigo. Like Genji has a good initial approach, but there as well, they, they don't seem synced at all. Like automatic is by himself there by short. There's no one even there ra waiting for like flashbang for him. There's no one really there calling for him. He missed the shot, and then he just goes down. And then short for Cloud Nine, when you know when you're Cloud Nine as well. That th Genji has taken banana control. You know, the gamble there is, hey, let's make sure maybe there are three there. We get the kill on automatic. This is a domino effect. You just go at that point. And again, no trades from Genji. I'll say one good thing that Genji has done is, I mean, at least in these losses, preserved enough economy to continue having buys. I mean, an AWP still an automatic that was saved by SOM. They've got M4s, they've got SMGs, they've got a decent amount of utility to make this kind of a drop down to SMGs in the FAMAS, you know, doable. That is one thing that I noticed about Genji. They are really good at not losing. <laughs> they slowly lose. Yeah, not not losing everything all yeah, at once. Yeah, not losing everything they all at once. They still lose it all. They still lose. They drag it out. No, no, here. don't get me wrong. They still lose, but uh, slowly, yeah. you know? Very, Which very slowly. It's definitely not more painful to watch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. And Cloud9 just bullying their way everywhere they want to go. And again, it's got to be it's got to be a save. Duffy has to be a save. Again, you see the bomb slide. I mean, I'm going to keep repeating it because I think it's just it's so apparent of what Gen G's problems are currently. And it's just that they're not playing together. It's all about like individual performances. Like one guy gets a kill, but there's really no one there to like trade. It's like an angle. Someone's holding an angle towards spool. He doesn't even re not re-peak. So you get like a crossfire towards the site. He keeps peeking. And then you get the guy on site that just keeps pe peeking. So definitely a little bit dysfunctional. It's a little bit weird, I must say. But I will say this. Because it's like minor things like that, and I do feel like they do have the basics down, that's actually a pretty easy fix when you have all the members on board in terms of what the actual approach is. And as for Cloud9, I actually have nothing but good things to say about Cloud9 for both at Vertigo and also this map so far. I think they're doing a really good job in taking map control. I think they're doing a really good job in having Genji always guess what they're going to be doing. Even if they're leaning towards B, it could be a slow B, it could be a fast B. But just the fact that they're changing their pace and the most importantly, they're trading so well. So they're keeping their nades and they're always making sure that someone is holding the flank. Man. This is this is rough. I'm 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 kind of amazed that the initial contact on bomb sites is so heavily in the favor of Cloud9, mm. all things considered.
Yeah, I do like, that's why I said, like, I do think that there needs to be a change of pace in terms of for Gen G. And sure, they did take the banana control there. The adaptation wasn't quite there in the sense that, like, there wasn't any trading on short and stuff like that. But as you said, as you pointed out, Jason, I actually do think they have to continue this. At least they do have to continue fishing for an opening of not making sure that Cloud9 is just getting map control for free and you're not even getting, you know, a, a man advantage from that. Well, they've put automatic here with the AWP. Maybe that catches them off guard. MOTM brought low by Utility, cleaned up by Som. He's gonna stay aggressive, he's got another one. This time it's Sonic with mistimed flashbangs to be blinded and taken down. And now if you're Genji, just back away. Play the two-man advantage. And just chill. And even here, I'm not sure who is it. I'm not a fan of it's automatic backing up here. You're a 5 or 3 situation and you know you've been stalking on the D bomb site. Have automatic stick around in spools with the AWP. You can still have the rifle back you up. Instead here, you're having a defensive setup on the B bomb site with two rifles. And you know for a fact that, that Cloud9 has an AWP here. I think they just, I think this is just a strategy to kind of preserve their economy. Not let anyone go down. I imagine we'll see things get quiet. As they let Flommy, or Floppy, excuse me, try and get a peek. I don't know why Flom just popped into huh. my brain. <laughs> Shout out to Flom. Yeah, what's up, Flom? <laughs> but letting Floppy just uh, go for a pick towards this eight bomb site. TV. Oh, he's oh. gonna find one. That's a fr that's so frustrating. If he opens this up, look at the rotation it's causing. They actually had three players stacked towards B. Now it's just one defender. This is perfect for Cloud9, although they're rotating back to the A bomb site as well, and that's the bomb on the ground. That's lazy from OC, man. Dropping no the bomb left. at mid. And floppy with a huge round oh and no. another follow-up. Oh dear. Oh, but already Bentet finds himself in the site. He's got to stay alive. There's only 10 seconds of round. Oh. oh. No, surely not. Don't drop this. Headshot angle with low HP oh and Bentet's going to save it. That's oh. way too costly. That can never happen in Gen G. A five on three when you have no money built up to lose four players in that fashion is is absolutely... You know what I always say, Jason? Bonkers. Bonkers, if this happened horrendous. to my team, you know what I always say? Yeah, I say... Throw the mouse out the window? No, I say... Say something really bad in Swedish? They have to plant the bomb. Right? Okay. The bomb's yeah. down, and you're fighting for bomb, but you're not mining the time, right? They obviously have yeah. to grab the bomb and then plant the bomb, but instead you're fighting for bomb in an open position when there's 20 seconds left on the clock instead of just trading on the bomb site. At the end of the day, yeah, the bomb is down. That's nice, and that's that's great because you're going to get some entries from it, but make the decision eventually of like 20 seconds left on the clock. What is the goal of the terrorist side, right? Plant the bomb. The bomb goes off, you win the round. Instead, you make it that close. For JT, that was such a winnable round, and I feel like it's just sloppy play. We yeah. say that the basics for uh, of Gen G is there, but once it goes down to like past, the, you know, when it's one minute left or whatever, all of the basics seems to be just thrown out the window. There's no more trading. There's no more like thinking about time. They just seem to be a lot of like individual play, and I put a lot of emphasis on that because that is the reason why they're losing. Yeah, I think in that point, too, we have to remember Genji were scrambling to try to make it back to A. Most of the players were stacked towards that B site. But Bentet, he Ooh. had the right idea. <laughs> and Som gets taken out by a blind OC. But at least Kusta, he traded it out this time around. But we know those trades... Problem one is, for one is not that it's not that ideal for the CT side of things. At some point for Gen G though, like you have to get a clean win, and that was the last round. And oh, Floppy almost had that. That timing was almost just perfect. And Benson obviously does not realize the position of I believe that Sonic over towards the hay cart. If one person wanders into his crosshair, this is so dangerous. Oh. Good trade from JT and. Still, even, even this round, it's going to be costly. Bomb should get planted. Automatic is rotating around through brackets. Not going to be able to stop the plant. So the extra 100 bucks is going to be great. MOTM, distracted by footsteps. He's going to go down for free. He's never even going to guess that automatic wrapped around. So a good hold for Gen.G, but they're just they're they're just barely holding on. Scraping by. Yeah, it's like fingernails clutching onto the edge of the mountain. I think automatic's going to be able to salvage an AWP here, though, at least. Still a very dangerous position if you're in, if you're Gen G. A lot of money on Cloud9 still, and Gen G really not have had any grasp of the economy so far. Two members alive there that round. 
I'm looking at the money again. It's just it's just so dry. And then for Cloudline, this is an important round overall, though. Not a lot of money on both sides, but obviously still very much Cloudline in the driving seat, even with one round advantage. Let's see if Genji can wake up a little bit here now. Instead of stringing rounds together, very important on the CT side here as well. It's so another A default coming in from Cloud9, opting to take Banana a little bit later. And for Genji, I love this from Genji as well. They're not fighting for Banana, they're saving their nades. Super important. The basics are there, like I said. Now it's all about having good trades on the bomb side. Oh, it's uh, all automatic. Yeah, it's automatic. All by himself. Oh my god, he gets stinked actually, Sonic. But it doesn't really matter. They have the bomb side now again. And I actually don't think that Cloud9 is even doing anything you know, out of the ordinary. They're literally just walking up for free and then just doing nice trades. But because Gen G is just so spread out, they're not getting any trades. No one's flashing for anyone. And there's just a bunch of people just dry peeking. <laughs> oh, Robin. You're so cute. Well, and the other side of the coin is too, because Genji have struggled so much to win some of these rounds, barely clinging on. The money's the money's gone again. These are the only two weapons that they can save: the AWP on Kusta, the M4 on Som. Everyone else is is pretty much broke. Benset has 1k, but Daps an automatic at a, at 650 and 100. Buy next round's gonna be real sketchy. Seven to five for Cloud9, and I mean if. They, the, like, their own success is kind of allowing Genji to somewhat stay in this game. The fact that they're taking these bomb sites so quickly and so convincingly means Genji really have rarely had to like just have fi all five players save because they're just you know they're able to bring out two guns from it. If Cloud 9s ever able to just clean out this Genji lineup of their weapons, like it's it's gonna be checkmate. Yeah, it's gonna be like a apocalyptic winter. <laughs> There's no nothing, no resources for Genji. See what Kusta can, Kusta can do with the op. Yeah, he's let's over go. at the B bomb Kusta side again. Cam. Let's yep. go. Approach again is nice here from Genji. They do take banana control. They don't spend a lot of money. Obviously, they, we do know they have an eco, but they set they set up with the. Was it Som? I think went over to B initially, threw his smoke down, and then obviously Kusta gets the entry on the op. I love this little swap as well. We talk about it like now we are getting that like four-man setup towards the A bomb site. Timing-wise for Cloud9 is okay. Now you are in the decision here of like, oh, we have mid control. There's a lot of time left on the clock. You have a lot of options here, like falling back, just holding positions. You know that Genji is gonna want to look for some some entries here and some information. And just by you holding there, you get two free kills there right off the bat. Oh, good kill. They know Som's in graveyard. There's going to be peek from the site. And he's second now. Oh, Floppy's oh. got to back away. This is intense. OC, one more kill with the AWP. And he's looking for a flank. He knows it's been a minute since Kusta was spotted towards Banana. Going to cross over and be able to get this bomb down. He's nervous, though. Yeah, like you said, it's been so long since we've seen Kusta, right? And even though, like, the call might be, oh, he's probably over at, over at the B-bomb site, just because it's been so long, Kusta could be anywhere. But OC, he's read this oh, so nicely. Shiza. He was worried right off the... In the beginning, I actually think that was an advantage to him of, like, thinking that Kusta was going to be closer than what he was. So he was kind of expecting that. He was... He was he was gambling a little bit. He had a lot of faith in that smoke and obviously knew yeah. the timing on it as he as he threw it right before the bomb plant. But, I mean, basically what's going on in his head is, okay, I've got, you know, another five seconds to watch towards lane before the smoke starts to fade and I need to be aware. But really using that smoke with what time was remaining to isolate the fight and just trusting that Kusta, if he was at small pit, small pit wouldn't just be jumping through it. Whew. Whoa. That mid push didn't work. No. And there was no utility to kind of back automatic up either. So I guess he thought his spawn was just really, really good to beat out anyone else. But that was definitely not the case here. Because OC one up them. And this does not help Genji's cause at all. They've already been struggling with these opening kills. But this time around, at least there's a crossfire. Between Daps and Kusta. Oh, and as I say that, Daps gets <laughs> Molotov out of his position. Not but so it's like, much. Yeah, it's praying crossfires though, because he's in the corner there, but it doesn't even help for like a smoke and stuff. So like, yeah, Cloud9 I think are doing such a good job. They have the man advantage. Waste some nades and make sure that you have all the angles covered so you don't just like dry peek somewhere. It's gonna pay dividends. 
five on three now. JT running through the smoke onto the A bomb site. This is a nice little crossfire still though, what we talked about. It doesn't really matter. It's gonna be a two on one. Oh man, even though rotation was there from Gen G, they had made the right gamble on the A bomb site. But because of the and we we keep talking so highly about the Cloud9 trading, we see it again here. Because they're so compact and because they're hitting the bomb site together, it doesn't matter if Gen G has all five members there, because the trading game has been so on point for Cloud9, they just end up winning these trades again and again. Yeah, I mean, that was actually, uh, this has been the trend of the whole half. That was actually a really sick crossfire that Genji was able to set up when the rotations came in. But again, just the initial fights are just one, obviously, OC picking up automatic. He's going to pick up another oh. one here. Kusta just dead blind behind the car. This is turning brutal. I don't really want to watch this anymore. Hey, listen. It's like we one can... of those snuff films. This we, can say, <laughs> we can still say we can good old fashioned spanking. <laughs> T side of map, right? I feel like I feel, <laughs> here's the thing. The only oh, I was gonna say the only, not the only, but one of the positives for Gen G coming into the T side at half is that they actually had a really nice basic approach on the vertical side as well. And as you said, if Gen G this used to be a very strong map for Gen G, at least I'm hoping that you know the excuse and stuff like that, even after plants, will be a little bit stronger. Yeah. But you are right though, Jace. Like you know, it's getting to a point in which like getting a little bit hard to watch and it's not because like you know we're shitting on genji too much we see a lot of good things about genji but you can clearly tell the holes in which you know why they're losing these rounds and it's it, it obviously a good thing for the future because these things are fixable but again we see and i'm not sure how many rounds and i don't even want to guess but i don't think genji has had opening rounds for both of these maps a lot i feel like cloud nine has always gotten the opening kills a lot of these times and i feel like they don't throw these um, these managers out the window all too much. Five on three again, you know, and they're wrapping down the bomb side. They're completely stuck here. We do see some trades, but again, I mentioned it. Cloud nine again, so compact play, so they get the trades, and it's so nicely done. Leaving automatic in a one on two situation now with an SMG. He has a smoke and a flashbang. He doesn't really know where the last guy is. He knows one guy is obviously on the bomb side because he planted the bomb. But here we get, we get the clear. It doesn't really matter. Nice run from Floppy. Nice trading done again from Cloud9. Can Gen G pick it up? And can we go to a third map? Or will Cloud9 make it 2-0? We'll see after the break. Ladies and gentlemen, 10 to 5 in the favor of Cloud9. Oh, the mid push. The mid push. It's been hurt. It's been hurt. It's been at least slowed down. Bentet and Som with kills. They're traded right back. That's that's a well well managed aggression. Yeah, it looked like Genji were absolutely ready for it. Not to mention the thunder footing coming out of Cloud9. Really loud. And at this point, there's just power and numbers floppy. He's gotta he's gotta get some nice shots off at this coffin area to make this retake possible. Oh, oh my dear god. Goodbye. Alright. That's a pistol round. Cloud9 with the aggression, trying to uh, to go for the uppercut. It failed. It failed miserably. It'd be like that sometimes. And this failed miserably as well. <laughs> what did you think was going to happen? Robin? Robin? <laughs> I didn't know it did that. That's like nuts. Why'd you do it when the camera wasn't on you, though? Like, now the <laughs> audience has no idea what you just did. I didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Well, six rounds for Gen G, and this better be one hell of a T side if they want to uh, come back into this game. Sonic wants to save this armor. He's got 100% of it, too, so. Yeah, easy upgrade. Yeah. 350. Oh, oh, oh no. no. What a dick move. Who did that? That's actually so good. Who even thought about throwing I don't that know. name? That's crazy. Uh, we're hearing some typing. I'm assuming yeah. Sonic is just typing like, you, you son of a gun. Those gloves, Potter, are way cooler than the purple ones. I gotta agree. I actually like these gloves a lot too, so I can't even argue with you about that one. But come on, the purple combo. You you like this whole um, dick move meter, hundred <laughs> percent. I like that. Whoever's he, doing these in production, he's yeah. really quick. You save save that dick move meter. We're gonna need it again <laughs> later. Yeah. But you like the purple background, Jason. 
I do. But I feel like, like it the... has with all the colors combined, uh... not just the purple alone. I mean, listen, if you're going to go for like a retro 80s theme, you need a little bit of neon purple in your life. Yeah, I was going to say, just... the neon thing is definitely the most important then. Yeah, you can't really, can't really have a, a retro tournament without purple. <laughs> Pentep finds a nice opening on Sonic. Do it. Shoot. Slow round here. A minute in. This is the notorious round that uh, winning the pistol round doesn't really matter too much. It's a very strong buy usually. Three-man stack over at the B bomb site though. Yeah, they no want, they want X Factor is Som. If you look at Som, he's all the way up rap side at the moment, and he's probably going to end up calling his team back. He sees that this is entirely clear, and yep. what what a nice play to get his team out of danger. Although nobody spotted MOTM in halls, mm -hmm. I'm actually kind of surprised that Cloud Nine hasn't rotated back. Considering, ooh, oh, he took his time with that. He took a bullet to the face for that shot. He made a count. This, I don't. Ooh, Benta, you better be careful. Better not lose that AK. That, I think, is a bit ambitious. I'm still okay with this round because one of the things what I love about Gen.G is that they actually kept the sides. So even though rotation was made, just the fact, like, normally you might see, like, oh, Gen.G just leaving Banana complete and just running up mid. Like, Bianta could have taken a more defensive angle, sure, but just the fact that at least they're staying their grounds and, like, making sure that we're not going to get flanked. Som had so much information there as well of, like, hey, A seems to be clear. At least... I'm just happy they won the round, honestly. You know, I think that the round call, because it was looking a bit dicey there. You know, even if Cloud9 didn't have any nades on that B bomb site, it had, they had three members there. They had a setup there as well for crossfires. Som did a good job there of calling back the, the guys over to the A bomb site. I'll take it. Robin will take it. <laughs> it's fifth approved. OC saves one AK. But other than that, it's going to be a pretty easy round from Gen.G. I say that, but I say that with the fact that it's going to be just USBs, no armor. Floppy has a P250, but out of the both EVO rounds, this is by far the most easiest one. Usually you do see a lot of teams just go together in this part. Throw some extra mollies on the bomb sites, but just make sure to trade. This is actually very... I was going to say, if this was the other way around, I'm not even surprised this is happening because it's Gen.G, but the fact that there's no trades and you even have the jump penalty from OC jump up there and, yeah. like, no one is there from Gen.G, it's just so weird to me, you know? Like, and especially knowing, you know that Cloud9 don't have a lot of money. You know they have the one AK that they're going to be be searching a kill for, and if outside of that, there's going to be a bunch of p 250 So, like, oh where's the trades? Boy. Where's the trades? <laughs> <laughs> Fifi getting angry. It's a classic. It's all right. Listen, Robin. I think part of the issue is that Christine and I have been watching North American Counter Strike for two decades now. <laughs> <laughs> We're used to these We're, things. We expect this kind of shenanigans, uh. this kind of <laughs> ridiculousness. You, uh, yeah. you know, you've been in this country now. You're, you're technically, you know, you're, you're. In my mind, you're a citizen at this point. Um, you just haven't had the same experience. <laughs> Of of this. <laughs> Here, look look at this. What is the what, what? Who doesn't have weapons up? Why you have like two nades? I, okay, never mind. <laughs> nice round from Cloud9. Really nice exactly. traded there. Focus in mid. on the positives. Good timing. There's a nice entry there as well on the B bomb site. Really a round that shouldn't have happened if you're Genji. Positives, Robin. Positives. But. <laughs> Cloud9 is just so great, so great. <laughs> <laughs> now you're getting it. Now you're getting it. Som with the MAC-10 waiting for the fire to go away. Oh, oh. wait a minute. That's JT? He must have hit a different, a weird button on his mouse. He must have had like the flashbang bound to like mouse four and he just, you know, glitched out. Rut roll. Either way, again, I'm surprised Robin isn't yelling. Ooh. Oh, that Molotov doesn't spread. That is unfortunate. Fell a little bit short. Oh, gave him a tag. Floppy heard that. That sound cue is definitely giving him some intel, but this smoke's going to be so crucial for Floppy. He's the only one with it. Not if he just gets the kills, though. I don't know how they're allowed to get that kind of a... That kind of a thought. Oh, my what? lord. What? Daps is a MAC-10 main. Defusing the bomb, Pros sticking don't fake, it. Baby. Pros don't fake, and oh, oh they do oh fake. My God. They what? fake. No, they fake all the time. He's still gonna get it. 
It's okay. Okay. Holy Ooh. moly. I was like, no, OC, no, man. What a recovery. Jeez, that MAC-10. Daps almost actually converted that. <sighs> you all right? <laughs> 12 to 7. That's... Yeah, JT does it as well. The old the old peek with the nade in hand trick. And that's the only reason this round gets so close. That's super costly for Cloud9. That didn't need to be that bad. Yeah, but we got to remember how the round started with JT fumbling with yeah. the nades, just getting a free, uh, giving a freebie over to Genji and Sonic only able to get the oh. one. And okay, Daps. Goodbye. Oh, man, that's a nice shot to take out. Okay. 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 Peak NA right now. Robin, and you're going to get treat. <laughs> Listen. You're seeing all of all it right. today. OC goes down. MOTM <laughs> tries to straight through the smoke, all right? You kind of see it at least. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was pretty bonkers. Yeah, I'll give him that. But yeah, calls around from Cloud9. This is looking pretty nice from Gen G, though. Save round is called. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe what we're witnessing right now. This is great, though. I can Scrappy. I can fully believe it. <laughs> blow for blow, you know? Weep, weep. Here we go. Boom! Yeah. Then some. <laughs> it's like watching... Boom! <laughs> what we really need if we want to go full retro and production, this is maybe an idea for you know the future. You don't have to do it right now, because <laughs> I don't throw you under the bus, unlike the player. Um, if you want to go full retro show... You gotta get those, you know, 80s or like 70s Batman, like the pow, bam, bang oh, captions, like right. the cartoonish yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah, Every ah. time some gun gets like a one dig through a smoke, you just pop that bad boy up on the replay. Yeah, with the sound cue as well. And on top of that, you mentioned it, even neon lights. We, we kind of got I, them. I just saw that, actually. <laughs> That's pretty nice. Pretty nice. Pretty 12 pretty to good. 8. Favor of Cloud9, they're one map up as well. CT side here on Inferno with uh, a oh. bit of a save round. Sonic saved an AWP or bought it. Saved it. He saved the AWP, but they already lost a member in and JT as well. So five on four. And uh, uh -oh. do it. Just MLT do it, baby. The B bomb site here. He gets the entry though. It's a four on four, but it looks like Genji is making his way into this bomb site here. Give me one more through smoke. Give you an off shot. Come on, Sonic. Yeah, I mean it's still very much doable. Sonic has to smoke and cut off the beep, uh, the banana here. You can just focus on the on the bomb site. Ooh, they're a little bit cheeky boost here first. Oh. I feel like ain't nobody peeking that angle at this point. Oh, he's he's gonna get one. <laughs> oh, he respawns. Oh, that's uh, that's definitely mostly for kills. Oh, just trying to keep the economy for Genji low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we'll save the op. It. It's time uh, to let exactly, the yeah. time to let the Deagles do their work. Yep. Sam is not there. That's unfortunate. Reloading, and automatic has come through. Now he's got a back. Oh, yeah, I think he's. No, he's. Oh, good. He's fine. He's fine. That bomb blast is really, uh, really forgiving. It is. I wish we could go back to the days yeah, where you have like to stare at the so bomb. Yeah, they've so much. I'm not a fan. Like, <laughs> there's a reason why we don't see a lot of ninja diffuse anymore. Like, you can literally stand right next to the bomb and be like, okay. Even on B, it's just like, yeah. Let's let's widen the radius a little bit. Let's make it costly to hold a bomb. You know. Mm. Yeah, these are some weak bombs. Yeah. Sonic. Gonna get dodging the flash right off the bat. Ooh, he's gonna push down mid. And Ooh! Oh, that's a double. Collat almost. He got robbed. Yeah. <laughs> what did he do? Hit like daps <laughs> in the leg, and then it went through and hit Kusta in the chest for a collateral. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that's combined a lot of damage. If Floppy can get a clean kill on his initial, and there it is, this opens up a realm of possibilities. I mean, just the USP on JT, and he does go down, and all right, well, now it's over. I don't know. That's, that's, so, that's so unfortunate. I wonder if they know the health of this. I don't know if he actually 
knows he got the collateral, but the HP is so low. Yeah. If he gets one more or OC oh. with his P250, these are like three like one bullet kills. I think they're definitely going. They don't oh, know. He's they don't know I was going to say, low. OC has such a great positioning too here. I wonder if even Gen G knew. Like, instead of Sonic here, I would at least wait for OC to make the peak first. You can still stick around the CT spawn and see what kind of happens because OC is the, the one that you want to go for a weapon anyway. Yeah, but I feel like we're saying that because we can see their HP. I, yeah, I think as well. Like, no, but this his is... flank was so fast. He yeah, was in banana before they had planted the bomb. So. Also, though, does did Sonic think that he didn't leg anyone or hit anyone in alt? He might think he hit legged one. Uh. Oh, this is going to be great, though, maybe from OC. Oh, He's going to okay. get all three of them. Oh, almost. That's a nice little eco round, though, nonetheless. Only one member from Gen G alive. I mean, I say that, and we look at the money. It's obviously really nice on Gen G. Automatic with close to 10k. Dap just fully buys, so there's 1k left, but they definitely still have money to be played. These are two nice kills here. They're clawing it back. They're clawing it back. And here we go. Cloud9 weapon round. They also lean 3 towards B in the beginning, with Sonic leading the way with an AWP. Looks to be taking an aggressive angle. Actually, doesn't go all too aggressive. I'm okay with that too. We don't have to waste. I I don't like this. Don't throw the flashbang. What's the point? Why? why yeah, okay. He actually saved the grave. Flashbang out now. Yeah, oh. great. This is mid round aggression. I actually don't mind this from Cloud Nine at all. We look at the timing. This is actually really nice timing because you kind of get the the call now of like there's no one B. You see the read here is from Cloud Nine as well, and sure we see the aggressive play from Gen G here. Obviously a great counter to what Cloud Nine is doing. Really taking map control where Cloud Nine is trying to take it somewhere else. Four on two now. They have all of CT leading the way back towards B, and they have full control of that. This is actually a really nice read from Gen G. Nice timing as well. What a nice bait and switch between Benton and Som as well. Man. Fast round and a fast save call here from Cloud9. We'll see about... Actually, Genji has great positioning here as well if they want to go for the chase. Yeah, if Kusta can get a little... clever, he might be able to find one here. And that would be huge for Genji, but... Oh! That... Th he should be dead. He yeah. should be dead nine times out of ten there, but Kusa does pick off those kills, and d these two members of Cloud9 dying, that's huge. Yeah, and on top of that, Genji keep on with the money in terms of keeping three members alive. That's a really nice round there. Quick and nice round. It's actually very common as well. You know, normally on first weapon round, what what does what does CTs tend to do on the first weapon round? They take banana control, right? Yep. And usually they send three. So Gen G right off the bat they see okay, Cloud Nine are throwing nades. Even if they don't know there's three, their call is made of like, hey, if they're three towards B, long A is open because you tend to stick one a one apps in one lane. So great round, great read by Gen G. Can they claw it back here? It's twelve eleven. Cloud Nine still in the lead here, but. Force on a save, just on P250s, smoke and a flashbang, and a B stack. And a B stack. Man, both these teams are really struggling on their CT side to hold on to these bomb sites. Yeah, I feel like that's been a common trend here as of late as well. It's definitely the CT side of things that these teams have been working on, but the struggle is real, Jason. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's odd to see this much of a difficulty. Although the, I mean, you you can't say. I mean, the economy is just. Both teams have really struggled to get money beneath their belt in the CT side as well. It's gonna be twelve to twelve, all tied up, and and Gen G absolutely need to take this map if they want to force a third Cloud Nine to Vertigo earlier. This would send Gen G into the lower bracket if they can't close out Inferno. But looking good so far. T side being put together. And very thorough as well. I mean, you even saw here. Genji are taking no chances at this point. Just making sure they're as clean as possible. Automatic. Here's a bunch, and he sees a bunch, but that was a chance for him to farm, pad some stats. Definitely a huge whiff there, but Som capitalizes. Ooh. MOT, I'm gonna get an AK-47 to save. Gonna hear some more footsteps. Surely can hear them chasing him. One kill right at the end. Oh dear, that's risky. He's oh, just hide. There you go. <laughs> 
23 kills on Ventet. He's having a fantastic game. 20, ga 20 kills on OC as well. Sonic's cooled off uh, from his from his phenomenal vertigo. So another buy for this Cloud9 defense to see if they can uh, get back on the board. Back to their winning ways. Same start. Three towards B. Another way of just having, not staying with 3B is that the first guy that rotates, he's the first one to spend all of his nades. And if Flop is that guy to rotate over to A, then that should happen pretty soon. But it's another late mid-round, I was going to say, like a 20 second delay take on the banana bomb site there. And now here we go. And this is what I was talking about. You look at Genji's positioning here, they're going to wait for the smoke. But then when we talk about like retaking banana. Oh no. What's Floppy doing? He seems like he doesn't know exactly where he wants to position himself. First kill is made. Oh, that's so sick. I take it all back. Don't question Floppy. <laughs> Never again. Never again. What a wild triple kill. That was so clean. The third one was absolutely yeah. insane. Like, the third one, you think that he's going to go down. And especially, like, with them just waiting in the smoke there. But that's also Gen G being a little bit, I think, not overly cautious. One of the good things that we, or one of the good things, that, for example, that Cloud9 had done in Vertigo, for example, when they are clear the smokes like that, is they actually throw one flashbang to clear it instead of just going in dry that you kind of see Gen G do there. I feel like it's so cautious. Oh. That's not a great peek. This is it's not a real chance. Two. JT's got such a job to do. Floppy Ace. No, he's... Oh, he's taking out. Sorry, dead. that's JT. He dead. The movement gave I, it away. I, <laughs> 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 oh, no. They're making this so costly. That could have been much cleaner, but Cloud9's going to be happy with stopping the run from Gen G. Maintaining that lead, 13 to 12, and weapons will be salvaged. And this was great. And what timing to just tuck yourself into that corner. First kill, second kill, and the third transfer over. Beautiful. It's a thing of beauty. And the perfect time for him to come alive there, too. Yeah, they needed what was something. That, four rounds in a row? Yeah, something like uh, something along those lines. One round lead. I mean, because of that, though, there's so much money they have to burn through. Psalms at 9,400. Automatic's over 10K as well. So they're going to dig into that. But especially if these plants keep coming down, Gen G has so many buy rounds to close out this map. Cloud9, if they want to win 2 0, they got to do it the hard way. Yeah, even seeing that round, yeah, they ended up winning. And you mentioned it too, like it's a little bit sloppy there for Sonic overextending himself. It's a four on two, they have to bring the bomb down. Money on Cloud9 is very low, and we know that Gen.G has had a good start of the half. They have a lot of money left to work with, so it's definitely an uphill, uphill battle here from Cloud9. If you win, end up winning this map, it's definitely impressive knowing that it's a lot of weapon rounds, so you actually have to win on that CD side. Nonetheless, we talk about approach. We see Cloud9 with only two members on that B-bomb site now. It's Floppy and uh, JT, I believe. And JT, oh, it's Sonic, actually. But JT doesn't have any nades left here to help Sonic out. So it's just Sonic is definitely the kingpin of this side. Smoke going down on the choke point when nades start coming in from Gen G, And then the flashbang should really help JT out here. Jason had pointed out before when the smoke's coming, he's in this fool's area too. The flashbang should come in here oh now. Dear. And then JT should try and go for another trade. But now because they got so many, th such a mad advantage, now we're talking retake instead. They already have members here from the CT side too. Man, I thought Daps was going to be good yeah. for at least one in that position. That's brutal. It didn't even look like they wanted to clear it. A good reaction yeah, from Floppy coming over. The timing was just so perfect for Daps as well, but Automatic refreshes that CT smoke. This is still doable. I mean, all members are coming from CT spawn. Automatic's already postured for a post plan, but Kusta, uh, they're only good for the one for one there. So Cloud9, a clean retake. And a great flash from MOTM for that retake. Yeah. All it takes is the one flashbang. Both of them from Gen.G are blind. Even if he didn't, so the flashbang, Kusta was reloading. Exactly, so it was just yeah. a really, really bad timing for that reload to come in. Just bad, bad timing I all think around. He might have thought that retake was going to be delayed because of the new smoke as yeah. well. 14-12. Yeah. And the only worrisome part here as well, if you talk about Gen.G, they still have the money, obviously, to buy and stuff like that. But because it was such a dominant round from Cloud9, 
their money is also growing now. So now you're not even in a case of like, we just win the one round, we put them on an eco gang, we can kind of even yeah. it out. Now you're in a point as well, the same thing with that top line were where you have to win two weapon rounds in a row. And that, that's a whole different story. Again, nice round here. We look at the radar. Look, the fact that Cloud9 can do this with just the two members, because Genji has not put a lot of pressure on the banana, they allow them to do it with setups like these. Genji never expects this because they see the banana push and they just expect the three guys on banana, so they forced to do like this. Overall, I think Cloud9 has just had a great read and great, like, in terms of um, mixing up the defensive setups. Yeah, mixing setups. up the defensive setups so well to a point in which, like, Genji is just struggling. Genji, because they're doing these fast rounds too, because they're not getting these rounds to work. They're definitely just in an uphill battle every single round, even if they've had the money to work. Oh. It's a one on four here for Automatic if he's gonna end up winning this round. Oh no. Oh, oh my god, he gets that too. Oh my. This is too easy. But we saw that on Vertigo too. This is how they won rounds. This is star player performance, Automatic. We know what this guy can do. It's a one on four. Now all, it's all up to JT. It's been a while now, so JT lost track of where Automatic might be, but site is definitely a place that you clear. Yeah, but are you going to hard clear this angle as he walks in? The answer is yes. Oh, Automatic played that so well. But I think JT, man, he's he's actually got to be thankful that he was so late on the rotate there because... By that point, automatic. He didn't. He didn't have any of the timings down anymore. You know, he was just so delayed yeah. on that retake. For for how good this initial setup was, that is an awful position to be in in a one versus four. That little setup they had for like in lane and watching halls, that's like that's a snowball setup where it's yep. like if one, like a or like a house of cards type situation. One player goes down, the other one's in such a terrible position. 15-12. Cloud9 have three chances. Again, though, it's been three round wins for Cloud9 in a row, but three bomb plants for Gen G. So the money is okay. That's a fortunate shot for Sonic, but he's got to be careful. I can't believe he's just sticking around spamming like this. That's insanity. Automatic going to turn the corner. Nade comes in oh. and missed shot. Floppy with an important trade. But this is going to put a lot of pressure on the defense now. Those three on threes, it's going to spread the defense. Nice nades. Peak oh wow, yeah, nice from Som. I love that information play. This is not really needed from MOTM, I feel like. You have the mana advantage there now. You already have the information that no one's necessarily in mid. You could fall back, let them come to you. But instead now, you still don't have a lot of information because he kill got killed from Boiler. They don't even have all the way up mid. Looks to be a bit of a gamble play from Cloud9. Floppy rotating back to A. I'm okay with this too. They don't have a lot of nades. It's OC that has a flashbang and a molly rather than sticking around together and verse for and Gen G is a very different approach. He actually ends up going down. It's going to be a one on two situation for BN Tat here. Molly left in his name. Bomb's about to go down. But this is a very fast rotate down for Floppy. He's not even getting the, like the best positioning he'd want. Well, Ben Tet to save the day. Twelve to fifteen. Tucks himself back in to dark corner. OC with the AWP. Floppy with an M4. There is a Molotov, and if that comes into this position, it's game. Oh my god, it has. It's gone right oh. into that position. He's moved out. He's AWP as well. Wow. Perfect usage of utility, and that's going to close it out. Cloud9 win 2 to nothing, 16 to 12 on Inferno. That's some impressive stuff. Well played from Cloud9, and uh, for Gen G, some very cool things, some also very sloppy things. Although you could say that, I guess, about Cloud9 as well. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I less actually, about Cloud9. A lot definitely less. Definitely less about Cloud9. I actually feel like Cloud9 was just in the reins of this whole is this whole series. I feel like I think that they played much better Counter Strike. I think that they had much better teamwork. They had a much better idea on what they wanted to do. Gen G, yeah, basics were there, but I, I mean, it, looking at stats and just taking a guess. I can't think that Gen G has more than like 15 to like 17 percent trades this half. Or this series. That'd be interesting. It's been absolutely absurd, like getting yeah. a kill and like no one is there to trade. They're all like all the individuals just all spread out. You don't even see flashbangs. Like they win rounds and again and again from star player performance. Even that automatic one before, like 
I don't know. I, I just think that Cloud9 played so much better. I think that Gen G has a lot to work to do. I think that the basics of like, hey, what do we do the first 30 seconds of the round? Keep that. Yeah. But work on the other stuff because that definitely needs uh, a lot of polish. And not to mention, how many times did we see Cloud9 pouncing onto Gen G when they had their nades out, just getting caught out without even firing their gun back, right? So that's certainly a timing issue, an approach issue, a game plan issue could be all three down the list but yeah. it's, it's definitely cloud nine playing really well and gen g just not yeah that was i don't know i think that game probably encapsulates most of my frustrations with where i think gen g should be at and, yeah. and where they actually are at which is uh which is always bummer because i think this team can be can be excellent but it's obvious they have to make some some big strides uh, in certain areas are we uh okay yeah we'll go to break <laughs> We're gonna go to a break. When we come back, we'll uh, we'll have I don't know. We'll close off the day. We'll look at the current standings and tomorrow. We're gonna look at tomorrow as well. What are the games tomorrow? We're gonna do some shoutouts as well. End well, of the day, Bean Boozle as well. Uh, end of the day, Bean Boozle for Christine. Oh. But when we get back, all of that will happen. <laughs> so stay tuned. Uh, we'll be right back.